Good morning, River of Life. Are you ready to worship? We are. So Psalm 138 says, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me and you greatly emboldened me. And so, Father, this morning we just come before you and we just say that um, you have greatly emboldened us. And in the midst of great trouble, Father, you, um, your fame surpasses all other things. And so, Lord, we decree over um, this worship time that we will just praise your name because you are so worthy. So worthy, Lord, is your name above every name. We just thank you, Lord. Cause I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder, we're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes, hope will arise Cause death is defeated, the King is alive Precious you, Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Coming and you're going and you're weeping and you're 
rejoicing. He is for you. 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 He is for you.
say stand steadfast so we will stand after we have done everything we stand we stand we stand we will not be shaken we will not be shaken we will not be shaken Silence a boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. Death could not hold. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. Silence the bones of sin and pray. The heavens are roaring, praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no, you have no rival. You have no equal. Now and for it. powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the
Jesus. Your resurrection power is flowing through my veins. Your resurrection power is flowing through my veins. Oh, you're alive now, I'm alive. You're alive now, I'm alive. You're alive now, I'm alive. And I will never die. You're alive now, I'm alive. You're alive now, I'm alive. You're alive now, I'm alive. And I will never die. No, you're alive now, I'm alive. You're alive now, I'm alive. You're alive now, I'm alive. Hey, Kathy and Nick, thank you so much. That worship was really beautiful. Boy, it was awesome. We so appreciate our worship team, don't we? Worship team is awesome. Hey, uh, I just wanted to uh, share a couple items with you before we take our tithes and offerings. Uh, first, I just wanted to invite you to connect with us online since we're still in the midst of this COVID crisis. Um, I want to invite you to connect with us online. You can visit us on our website, on our Facebook page. I'll have links below. Uh, you can also connect with us on one of our Zoom calls. Um, we have a Thursday night prayer Zoom call from 6 to 6.30. And, um, and during the week, there should be some uh, home church Zoom calls that are also available that you can connect with. And if you'd like to connect with one of those uh, calls and you haven't been invited already, just shoot me an email. I'll put my link down below and I'd be happy to get that information out to you because we'd love to connect with you, at least be able to see you and hear your voice online, if not in person. And hopefully we'll be, all be able to get back together real soon. In terms of giving, I want to let you know you can give on your mobile app and you can give uh, on our website. Again, a link below. This should be River of Life or rolcf.net uh, slash giving. You can give there. And I'd also want to highlight something new for each of you guys. Um, many of you may be receiving your, uh, what do they call it? The stimulus check from the government. And uh, some of you may find that you don't need it or don't need all of it. And uh, we wanted to give you an opportunity to make a contribution to the church. Uh, we have set up a new fund called the COVID Relief Fund. 
So if, while you're online, if you want to select that fund, you could give some or all of that check if you don't need it to help those folks who actually do, who are in need. Uh, some folks out there are in dire straits, having trouble putting food on the table or paying bills. And if you would like to help them, all of that money, 100% of whatever's given to that fund, will be given to folks in need. So I encourage you to consider uh, giving to those folks who may be in need now. And uh, with all that said, let me turn it over to Weston Brooks for an amazing message. I love you guys, can't wait to see you soon. It's not about COVID. Let me just say that again. It is not about COVID. Now I know that sounds like so weird to say right now when everything feels like it's about the coronavirus and uh, you know, everything's been canceled because of coronavirus and uh, we can't go out of our houses because of coronavirus. And if you do venture out of your house, you're confronted with masks and gloves and blue tape on all the floors telling you which direction to walk in or where to stand and uh, all the news, all the social media, everything's talking about Corona. I can't even get a haircut because of coronavirus. And, uh, you know, the Bible says that, uh, you know, you need to discipline the unruly. And man, does my hair need some discipline right now? It's getting so unruly. I, you know, I opened up my, uh, <laughs> my weather app the other day. And on the top of it, when I opened it up, right on the bar there is, a, is a, the latest count on coronavirus. How many people have been diagnosed? How many people have died? It's like, I didn't open my weather app to get a coronavirus update. I wanted to get the weather. It's just crazy. It's not about the coronavirus, though. It's not about COVID. And uh, I think, you know, the question we should be asking is what should we be doing during this time? And, and what should we focus on during this time? And of course, the answer to that question really depends on a much more fundamental question, which is what is the Lord doing? And, and uh, you know, there's probably, there's, there's lots of opinions about this out there, and I don't want to just be another opinion in the sea of opinions, but I do, I do want to offer uh, some guidance, and, you know, hopefully some guidance based on, on the Spirit of God. You know, I've been so busy on so many fronts that uh, it's difficult to slow down and to quiet the soul and to hear the Lord's voice, and uh, it's really hard <laughs> to resist the temptation to be glued to my computer and listening to, to pundits and commentaries and, and my favorite preachers and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, and I was working on uh, my message the other day, and, uh, and I was just honestly just, just really struggling with it. And uh, after, a, after a few hours, I just, I just closed my computer. I just, I, just, I just put everything away. And I realized it's like, I don't want to talk about God right now. I want to talk to God right now. And so I just put everything away and took a couple hour uh, walk uh, just to pray and just to be with the Lord and, and uh, just to hear Him. And, uh, you know, honestly, it was like the best thing I did all week. And it's not like I didn't have times of prayer and communion with the Lord earlier in the week. You know, I always do that uh, all the time. Um, but there was something special about this. And I think, um, I think it has something to do with the spontaneity of it all. I think it was the fact that, that I was, in, in that moment, I was responding to the Spirit of God in me desiring fellowship. And I think it has something to do with the fact that what I thought was most important at that time, I was willing just to lay it aside for what was really the most important thing at that time, which was responding to the Spirit of God. And, and the Bible says that the, that the Spirit within us is jealous for us, jealous for that fellowship with us. You know, Jesus paid an incredible price so that we could have this fellowship with God. 
and he values it. He values it far more than we do oftentimes. And I, I really feel like this is the right thing for us to be doing right now, to, to slow down, to, to hear the Lord, to strengthen ourselves in His grace. I mean, don't, don't shelter in place, shelter in grace. You know, more important than your physical health is, your, is the health of your relationship with the Lord. And I mean for real, like, like if you're feeding yourself on a constant diet of news and social media, or even a constant diet of your favorite preachers, and you're not finding that quiet contentment in your own personal communion with the Lord, you got a bigger problem than the virus. Let me just say it again. This whole coronavirus crisis is not about the virus. And I'm not in denial uh, about the seriousness of the, of the virus, and I'm not trying to encourage you to be in denial. I'm just saying, lift your eyes higher. I had a dream a couple of years ago. It was, uh, it was the most powerful and uh, significant dream I've had in the last couple of years. And by the way, dreams are one of those ways in which God speaks to us. We see this clearly in the Bible, and, and, and it's certainly been one of those areas that where, where God has really spoken to me uh, in some very meaningful ways. And, and so I had this dream, and, and the, the dream was primarily about the cost of walking in truth and love, having an unwavering commitment to the truth, and a um, unfailing ability to love others will oftentimes cost you. You know, remaining loyal to the truth might just mean that you have to suffer rejection or misunderstanding. And, and keeping your love on means you cannot just live for your own well-being. And love compels us into places and situations and into people's lives in ways that cost us time or, or money or comfort or convenience. And so this dream was just reminding me about this. Uh, but the dream ended with the voice of the Lord crying out, Isaiah 22, Isaiah 40. And I wanna ask you just take a quick look at these two chapters. I think they have something for us to learn in this hour. And of course, Isaiah is a, is a very popular, it's a very important book in the Bible. Uh, it was one of the most important books to Jesus, uh, the apostles and the church throughout history up to today. It's oftentimes called the fifth gospel. And Isaiah uh, 22, however, is, is, is actually part of a section of Isaiah, chapter 13 to 23, that is not particularly popular. There's, you know, mostly, mostly the second half, you know, chapter 6 is popular, the second half is, is very popular, but, but there's a section where, uh, in 13 to 23, where, where God uh, is basically telling Israel, uh, don't trust in all these nations that surround you because they're all basically under God's judgment. They're all, they're walking in pride and rebellion and, and, and they're trusting in themselves and their wealth and all kinds of other stuff and, and they're just doomed to fail. Don't put your trust in them. And, and then in chapter 22, God actually lists Israel itself among the nations not to trust. In other words, don't even trust in yourself. The whole encouragement was, Trust in the Lord. And just to give some context, during that particular time when Isaiah wrote that, uh, Israel was facing a very significant threat. And that threat was the nation of Assyria. And Assyria was sort of the world's superpower at the time. It was a brutal empire that ruled with uh, fear and cruelty. And uh, they were on the rise, and of course they had their sights on Israel. And Israel was worried and trying to figure out, what do we do? Do we align with Egypt? Do we align with these neighbors? Do we align with Assyria itself? Like, do we try to make friends? Like, like what do we do? And Isaiah was like, listen, don't worry about Assyria. Trust in me. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take care of Assyria. There's actually another nation, Babylon, which will eventually take over and conquer Assyria, they're actually going to be an even bigger threat. But if you'll trust in me, I'll guide you through all of those threats. Don't worry about it. And Isaiah 22 actually captures this time where as the Assyrian army is approaching Jerusalem, 
uh, the, the, the city is, is, is in a panic and in an uproar, and they're trying to do everything they can to prepare, and they're building the wall stronger, they're, they're taking care of their water sources to make sure they have water in the city, and they're doing all these frantic preparations as this threat is kind of coming at them. And sure enough, the Lord uh, was faithful to his word, despite Israel's unfaithfulness, um, the Lord struck down a whole bunch of their army, they ended up leaving, going back to Assyria, the whole thing ended up being a big nothing, and Israel was delivered from Assyria. And when that happened, they began to celebrate out of relief that this threat was now gone. And in chapter 22 of Isaiah, Isaiah actually criticizes both the panic and the celebration. Why would he do that? Well, his point was this. The people of God were missing the point. God was saying, the real issue is you're not putting your trust in me. That's the real issue. Assyria is not the problem. Even Babylon, which is going to be a much bigger threat to come, they're not even the problem. The problem is you're not trusting in, in me. And so because you didn't trust in me, you panicked when Assyria came. And then when I delivered you and they left, now you celebrated. You panicked when you should have been trusting me, and you celebrated when you should have been repenting and making some adjustments and changes in your life. What does that have to do with us today? Well, I'm certainly not saying that, that our current situation is somehow similar to what Israel uh, was facing. And I'm not trying to be like all gloomy and doomy and, and, and prophesy that something worse is going to happen if we don't get our act together. But listen, we do live in a world that is tribulating or going through troubles and, and periodically our everything is okay bubble just gets burst. It's just a huge wake up call that uh, nothing is certain or reliable except the Lord himself the one who created and sustains all things. And, and listen, I do believe, yes, there are potentially bigger problems than COVID facing the world and our nation. And I think our takeaway from Isaiah 22 for this current situation is that we need to take our eyes off the threat and fix our gaze on the Lord. And whether COVID turns out to be smaller or bigger than original expectations is not the real point. Can we learn uh, some things to better prepare in the future? Sure. The Lord did not criticize his people for preparing. He criticized them for not seeking him in their preparations. They worried about their natural water source, but never considered God, who is the water of life. And honestly, you know, God's been speaking to the church long before COVID ever showed up. The spirit and the bride say, come and let the one who hears say, come and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes take the water of life without cost. And when you follow the story of Israel, they did not heed the Lord's warning and continued in their ways. And eventually Babylon grew strong, conquered Assyria, and came for Israel. And the people assumed the Lord would save them from Babylon, as he had done with Assyria, but the Lord stayed true to his word and let Babylon destroy the city and take the inhabitants captive. They were so devastated and so demoralized that they assumed it was all over and God had finally given up on them and, and abandoned them forever. And now that, that brings us to Isaiah chapter 40. And, and, and starting in Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah is now prophesying and speaking to those who are in captivity. Amazing chapter. It starts off with comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem and call out to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed, that she has received the Lord's, from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And I just love how that, that, that starts off. God doesn't start off with a, I told you so. He doesn't start off with a, you deserved it. He starts off with comfort. He says, speak kindly. That's one of the hallmarks of the voice of the Lord is to bring comfort, is to speak kindly, not just judgment and condemnation. 
And then it goes on and it says, The voice is calling, Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. And of course, John the Baptist quoted those very words as he was preparing the people for the arrival uh, of Jesus. And uh, it's times like this that, uh, listen, the proper response is always a response of repentance. And, 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 and to say that does not uh, necessarily mean that, that God sent COVID to punish us for our sins. Um, repentance is just the posture of the heart that turns away from false or counterfeit claims on our allegiance and fixes our eyes on the Lord, the only truly one worthy of our allegiance and trust. And, and he goes on and says, a voice says, call out. And he answered, well, what shall I call out? All flesh is grass and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. You know, as remarkable as humans are, you know, the glory of God's image still flickers through broken humanity. Our resilience and our creativity is, is astonishing. But listen, no amount of human ingenuity can conquer death. And as resilient as grass is, it still dies. And as beautiful as the flower is, it still dies. And, and Isaiah said, so that is true of humanity apart from the Lord himself. And he goes on and he says, get yourself up on a high mountain and lift up your voice. And that is certainly the call of God for us in this hour right now. Get up on the mountain first to meet with God himself. And then we need to lift our voice. And what does, what does the, our voice need to rear out, uh, uh, cry out? Do not fear and say, here is your God. And I love verse 10. Behold the Lord. Behold the Lord. Look to him and look upon him. And I love it. it says, it goes on and says, Behold, his reward is with him. Not his anger, not his punishment, not his vengeance, but his reward is with him. Does not the writer of Hebrews said that those who have faith, they believe that God is, and they believe that he's a rewarder of those who would seek him. His reward. Behold his reward. What is his reward? Well, he, Isaiah begins to say, he says he's like a shepherd. He will tend his flock. His reward is his loving care. A shepherd who tends his flock. It says he, he gathers his lambs into his arms and carries them close to his heart to gently lead them. Listen, maybe people can't hug you right now, but Jesus can still hug you right now. Do you know the hug of the Lord? Have you, are you experiencing him wrap his arms around you during this time to carry you and to lead you? And then Isaiah goes on to describe the glory and the majesty of God. I mean, he goes on in so many different ways. It's, it's worth reading. I won't read it now for the sake of time, but, but take some time to read through Isaiah 40. It's amazing. There's literally nothing to compare to God. And then in verse 26, he says, Lift up your eyes on high. I had another dream just a day or two ago, and, and I, was, I was preaching a message on what to do if you feel like your relationship with the Lord is less vibrant than you'd really like it to be. And, uh, and it was going really, I mean, it was good. I had to admit, in the dream, man, I was preaching it good. It was like anointed. And, and everyone was, was really interested, and like every ear was attentive. Uh, <laughs> And uh, especially as I was kind of describing this problem, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but as soon as I started talking about what to do, there were all of these distractions and interruptions. And it was, it was hard for people to hear. And all the energy and excitement just got sucked out of the room. But would you like to hear the end of that message? What it was? And basically the solution to revitalizing your relationship with the Lord. The way to go about it was this. It was, 
It was an exhortation to recapture the wonder and the awe of God. Lift your eyes higher. The glory of God cannot compare to anything else. And the glory of knowing God cannot compare to anything else that you know. He is amazing and wonderful. It's just, it's, and we need to recapture that wonder, that awe, whatever it takes for you to recapture. I think it was Paul who said, listen, these temporary afflictions cannot compare to the weight of the glory to be revealed to us. And if you'll, if you'll take your eyes off of the threat in this hour and you'll put your eyes on the Lord, let Him draw you. Let Him amaze you. Let Him show you how wonderful and awesome He is. That's what it means to, to recapture the wonder and awe. God is wonderful and He's awesome. And I'll, let me just conclude with just this exhortation from, um, from Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews says, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance. Let us lay aside every encumbrance. Let us lay aside Facebook, Twitter. Let us let aside Google. And the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. And he goes on, and he says, listen, don't, don't despise even the discipline of the Lord. In other words, when the Lord is, 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 wants to bring adjustment into our life, and, and I do believe that this is one of the things that God wants to do during this time, is, is help us to make some very needed, necessary, helpful adjustments in our life. Don't despise that. It's actually a sign of God's love. One of the worst things that can ever happen is God just abandons you to no correction and no adjustment. Listen, if you're just going on your merry way and, there's, there's, and the Lord is not uh, trying to gently, lovingly help you to make some adjustments, you're really in big trouble then. <laughs> That's like judgment. Anyways, but you're not under judgment. You have a loving God. And then he goes on and he says, listen, Strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble. Strengthen the hands and strengthen the knees. And of course, uh, in biblical imagery, the hands are a picture of prayer. Lift up your hands in holy prayers. That's the way that the people of God used to pray was with their hands lifted up. Your hands are prayer and your knees are a sign of bowing. And bowing is worship. Strengthen prayer and strengthen your worship. Prayer and worship and our communion with God. Listen, it's not about COVID. It's always about the Lord. And it's important to know the Lord and it's important to hear the Lord. Jesus told us, be careful how we listen. But that's for another message. I just want to close this message with the, uh, with the same prayer as last week. And uh, it's, a, it's a prayer that I think is just makes a lot of sense for this time. And it's a prayer that is really modeled after the prayer that the Lord himself taught us to pray. And so let us pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, let your name be glorified. May all the earth know you and honor you for you are good to us and you love us with abundance you give life and rule with compassion and kindness may your loving and wise reign come to all the earth may your pleasure be done in our communities so that we may experience the joy of heaven in our lives give us grace and peace in these difficult times sustain us and our families with your watchful care help us be gracious and generous to those in need 
Hold not our sins against us, but heal and restore our land. Help us make changes that we may focus on your will, not ours. Give us the strength and wisdom to pass this test and not fail. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. We love you guys. We send our blessings to you. And we can't wait for the day face to face once again.
name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name.